the mainstream gaming journalism crowd, a fascinating crowd to watch because they truly hate video games. They hate gamers. They hate everything that you stand for. They despise you. And they spend all day showing you that they hate you. They hate your guts. They can't, they can't stand anything about you. And now we've all seen the Sweet Baby Inc. story with Kotaku and other shill websites out there uh, just standing for Sweet Baby Inc. and standing for them and telling you gamers that you're all terrible and horrible people. We've seen that. And now the speculation is that Gamergate 2 is upon us. And I do believe that it is here. And that is a, another discussion for another time, even though I have many videos on that we will continue to talk about that here on this channel but this story in particular with IGN IGN over on Twitter says Resident Evil 5 simply can't be remade at least not by the standards or to the standards of Capcom's best work so the answer is not to remake but to rewrite why on earth would they say that? But also, what's the big deal? It's just a it's just a tweet, Jeremy. It's just an article that IGN's written. They're just giving an opinion. What's the big deal? Well, they shut off replies. No one can reply. No one can reply. Now, that's always a red flag. You're talking about IGN. How many followers does IGN have? IGN has almost 10 million followers. And if you go through their Twitter account, you'll see like, Oh, that you can comment there. You can comment there. You can comment on that one. You can comment on every single other post, it appears. But for some reason, we can't comment on the Resident Evil uh, post for some reason. Very, very interesting. So, of course, of course... We're going to look into it to see what exactly is going on. What exactly is going on with IGN as to why they don't want us to read this article? Or why do they not want us to respond to this article? Um, why don't they want people to have voices and give them feedback? Well, if you, <laughs> if you scroll down, if you scroll down uh, right here towards the bottom of the article, set in a fictional West African country, Resident Evil 5's primary antagonist are black people. Yes, technically the Ouroboros uh, virus that protagonist Chris Redfield is fighting. But the Parasite's host is depicted as a nation of mobs and primitives who are violent even before their infection. Intentionally or not... Resident Evil 5 positions Africa as the dark continent, an uncivilized world harboring a diseased population that needs gunning down via Western intervention in the name of global security. My goodness, dude. <laughs> and they... they <laughs> In the, in the 2020s, in a post-Black Lives Matter world, there is only one acceptable response to a white man shooting waves of Africans for an entire video game. No. Re <laughs> Remakes may be able to redefine their source material, but there is only so many changes you can make until it's not a remake at all, but an entirely new game. And if you take Africa out of Resident Evil 5, it is Resident is it Resident Evil 5 anymore? Even with a vastly improved, more sensitive sensitive take on the continent uh, perhaps one with a black protagonist and a more empathetic look at the outbreak the experience would simply be too divorced from the original uh, to hold the name Resident Evil 5 <laughs> this is amazing so <laughs> yeah so black people being in a video game means you have to change it now all right so, and this is how, like, the, the circle of diversity works. Like, we need representation. We need representation, ladies and gentlemen. We need more representation. And then you get representation. It's like, well, you can't have, you know, well, that type of representation, we got to change that. We can't, we can't have that type of representation. It's like that wonderful meme, you know, uh, where it shows, like, the SJW, like, oh, you can't have a, a white guy shooting a black guy because that's racist. And it's like, Okay, well, then you have the black guy shoot the white well, You can't have the black guy shoot the white guy. Now you're trying to say black people are violent. And like, okay, well, then let's have 
you know, two white guys shoot each other. Well, you can't have two white guys shooting each other. I mean, then there's no representation. Where's the black people? And like, well, okay, we'll have two black people shoot each other. Well, you can't have two black people shoot each other. That just shows black on black violence and you're celebrating it like it's a thing. You can't keep these freaks happy. You can never keep these freaks happy. They are psychopaths. And IGN is getting wrecked as they should. They are getting wrecked in the replies. Um, quote tweets, I, I gotta be careful. There's our boy Critical Drinker. Please stop having opinions on video games. <laughs> yes. Comments turned off. There's Dan Vask. Uh, there's the quartering. Why do they shut comments off? They're getting crushed, bro. <laughs> Drops the ridiculous news and turns off comments. LOL. Classic IGN. Uh, yeah. It says some crazy ass shit. Turns off comments. Does not elaborate. Every single time. IGN locked the comments because uh, in Resident Evil, Africa has black zombies. <laughs> they shut down the comments because they knew exactly how retarded this take was. If anything, Capcom needs to remake the atrocity that's Resident Evil 6. Uh, if, you're, if you're so sure about that, how about you turn the comments on IGN? You scared? It's beautiful. Uh, there's Mudahar. I legit can't believe we're having the brain dead Resident Evil 5 is racist debate again. <laughs> IGN shutting off replies. They knew damn well how stupid this sounded. Ricky Berwick, if you think Resident Evil 5 is racist, you are the racist. Fantastic. Welp, I knew this was going to happen. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Sweet baby ink uh, right now. Uh, there's my tweet right there. Uh, yeah, dude, I mean, this is classic. This is classic games journalist right here. It never fails. It never fails. And again, just to be clear, these are the, these are the type of people that are working on your video games right now. Uh, check this out. I have a team of 21 right now uh, for Validate. It's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team for indie games. But... Who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Um, and I'm not saying that white people in the industry are creating safe, unsafe environments. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something may be okay, but it was really a microaggression. A microaggression. So there you go. Um, that is uh, what, uh, there's a word, there's a word, there's a word I'm thinking about. Oh yeah, racist. That's a racist right there. That would be a racist. This person is a racist. But yeah, this is uh, this is the latest in games journalism. This is why uh, the games journalism world is falling apart right before our very eyes. But luckily, we have GeeksAndGamers.com, our website. And you're not going to see, well, I mean, you might see some clown takes on GeeksAndGamers.com. For all I know, we do have a bunch of different writers. But what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, a vast variety of different opinions and you're going to get some honesty and no bullshit over there so if you're interested please go over to geeksandgamers.com uh and uh, check it out i mean we've got a forum over there we're working on upgrading the site as well we've got some articles uh specifically uh about sweet baby ink one that i was very proud of that, that alex wrote right here sweet baby ink does exactly what gamers think they do uh, and many other ones so go over there make yourself an account we appreciate all of your support. You guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later.